Toyota's off-road systems just received a major upgrade. We're going to show you how the new crawl control and multi-terrain select systems work on this episode of Driving Sports TV. There are many reasons why Toyota's modern SUVs and trucks are popular for off-road adventure. Some will say it's because of reliability, others just like the community. But for me, it's because of two features that are unique to Toyota, crawl control and multi-terrain select. Other car makers may offer something similar, but based on my experience, the Toyota systems stand out as best in class. With the introduction of the TRD Off-Road and TRD Pro versions of the 2022 Tundra and 2023 Sequoia, Toyota has taken the opportunity to introduce an even better version of its off-road toolbox. In this video, we're going to explain how these systems work to make you the master of every off-road situation. The story of how these systems have been improved starts with the Toyota Safety System 3.0. Yes, the same feature that controls emergency braking also affects the capabilities of the off-road hardware. To explain the changes and how they're interconnected, here is Jay Sackett from Toyota. For this generation Tundra, it's, it's more than just the crawl control that it changed. As we adopted our new safety systems, the uh, TSS-2 to TSS-3, those systems need a very rapid response braking system. Within our brake calibration and brake controls, for this next gen, we have new brake boosters, and we also have our vehicle skid control mechanism, uh, ECU and control. That's also now in line with our electronic brakes and hydraulic fluid. Helps smooth out and speed up the pressure to the, the brakes. So that way, with that supplement from the VSC computer and the new brake boosters, we can actually run the, the brake booster motors at a little bit lower speed than what we had to do previously, so it makes the overall system quieter. Now that really comes to light when you're in the crawl control. With our crawl control logic, it's controlling the throttle mapping, it's also then controlling the brake boosters and the braking to help control the vehicle up and over obstacles for our customers. I mean, what you'd notice in the previous gen is that the brakes would have to uh, react and the, with the older uh, brake boosters, um, you'd get a lot more noise and feedback into the cabin that the system was active. With this next gen system, with the advanced safety packages, this also enhances the crawl control into being very quiet and smooth operation. So it really allows the customer to experience the off-road activities without having the anxiety of the extra noise that's coming into the cabin. So today we're driving a limited trim of the new Tundra, but it's been enhanced with the TRD off-road package. That gives it a lot of the capabilities of the TRD Pro without having to spend the TRD Pro price. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it into crawl control mode, and I'm just gonna keep it on low two, which is the lowest setting. And it just lets me kind of work my way through the obstacle. I can drive this also just normally, but I'm just using this to show you how this system works and you can hear power shifting around. We do the seesaw. And at this point, I think I wanna move a little quicker, so I just turn the dial and away we go. I'm coming up to these super tight trees, so I want to be able to override crawl control. How do I do that? Well, it's really simple. All I do is put my foot on the brake if I need to uh, slow down. And then when I take my foot off the brake, the vehicle yet again, starts to accelerate and I'm going too quick so I'm just going to put my foot on the brake here and just kind of basically I'm doing one foot driving and I'm keeping an eye on my spotter just telling me when to turn trust the spotter There we go. Okay, now I can take my foot off the brake and it still continues on in crawl control mode. I don't have to enable, disable, enable, disable. It just does it automatically, which is nice. So now that we've gone up the hill, we're going back down the hill and crawl control continues to do the job as a hill descent control system. It is maintaining my speed at, uh, what is this? This is zero miles an hour. <laughs> so very, very slow. 
now I'm going to turn. Now we're going to test out the articulation. So my spotter's telling me to slow down, so I'm putting my foot on the brake. And I'm just riding the brake, basically. I'm letting crawl control walk me through. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I can actually turn on a front camera here. We have a really good trail camera. I'm just using my brake to walk myself through. Now it's a little bit wiggly because we're only up on two wheels. And then that last wheel goes. And there we go, on to the next obstacle. For the next test, we're going to uh, go ahead and disable crawl control, and we're going to use MTS, which is the Multi-Terrain Select System. This gives us a number of pre-designed programs to be able to handle different types of terrain, uh, whether or not we need more wheel spin or we want less wheel spin. Several different drive modes we now have included, but one big thing that I hope and our customers enjoy and that I know I will enjoy is that it's now also available in four high. You don't have to go into four low into these very extreme conditions to be able to get some benefit of the advanced controls. Four high is used for any kind of slippery surface, any kind of low mu situation, but where you want to keep your speed up a little bit. So for example, you're driving on a snowy road or a dirt road that's a little bit loose and you want to have good traction. We have snow mode, uh, deep snow mode. We have mud and dirt all available at the four high. And then also now with the for low, we also have rocks and moguls available. For low is really used for really low speed. You get more gear ratio there, more torque. So it's when you're really kind of stuck in a tight spot, you're trying to get over a big rock or trying to get out of a ditch or something like that, for low really gives you that extra torque to be able to, to do that. But really low speed situations. So what we have up here is a rock garden where we're going to tippy toe through and we're going to set MTS to rock. Rock mode, that is really looking at a semi-aggressive off-road scenario where you're going up over large rocks out on the off-road scene or scenario. It really helps you get up to a rock and control each wheel as it's pulling up and over so you're not slipping or spitting rocks out in a much more controlled environment for wheel spin. It will look at the speed, the, the rate of turn on each one of the wheels individually and apply the drive force or brake force according to what it sees as wheel slip versus how fast the overall vehicle is moving uh, up the slope or down the slope as the case may be. I'm just going to put a little throttle on to try to crawl up. Now I'm in low, I have MTS rock, everything should be as slow and subtle as possible. I'm just going to set it down. Sand mode will really control your drive force because you really don't want your wheels to stop spinning because otherwise you will start to get stuck. So it will really keep a lot more torque and uh, motion in your wheels to keep you moving through the sand so you never get to a point where you stop and start to get bogged down. Oh my gosh, this is like a cliff. So I'm going to turn on the DAC, which is part of the crawl control system. I have it in low two. And what we're going to see is how the individual wheels will brake. And we're just going to let this vehicle sort it out. Now I'm going to take my foot off the brake, which is totally a natural feeling, but it'll do the job for me. See, we're just inching down. Now, if it's too slow and this feels a little on the slow side, I'm going to kick it up to low two. Downhill assist will help you run down a smoother slope as well as some loose sand, but the crawl will also look for individual wheel spins and gnarlier strain to help you around. We're at more than 30 degree angle. We're probably closer to a 40, I would guess, because that's really steep and the gauge only goes up to 30. It's kind of a useless gauge, actually. So for the mud bog, let's uh, change it from crawl control to mud. I don't want to charge it too fast or I might scoop my nose into the hard stuff. There we go. Ah. <laughs> For mud mode, multi-train select enhances more of the wheel spin and wheel speed 
to throw the mud off so it's not building up inside the wheels. It helps you get the traction moving forward, but also keeps the wheels clear of uh, mud that's getting stuck or sticky to the, to the treads. Mogul mode will uh, help the uh, vehicle go up over offset terrain where you may have a bump in front or another bump so that you're really starting to get the twist. So as you start to get up and over one mogul, one bump, your wheels will come off the other corners and will help restrict the thrust or the speed. But those wheels are not just burning energy there to help you climb up over individual bumps in the, in the terrain. Even though this has a coil spring rear, it still has pretty good articulation. I think it's really exciting that Toyota is now offering the TRD off-road package as an add-on package that most people want. I mean, not everybody needs a TRD Pro with its box shocks and full underbody armor, but you still want the multi-terrain select. You still want the crawl control and the hill descent control. This offers that. And as we saw today, even on a limited, it is still very capable. Whether you're choosing a Tundra or a Sequoia, all of this applies. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthat. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos. We make them for you, and we hope you enjoy them.